I did notice that the first time I signed a contract with them, it, in the contract it stated that the driver will receive 88% of the load, and then the second... Jane Doe in the building. Good evening on this good Friday evening. How's it going? Cold. Very cold. Yes. Yes. I couldn't agree with you more on that. But me being from the North, you know what I'm saying, the Northeast, we're used to it. We're used to it. These new drivers, they they get in this game and they they... They're all in shock. I'm going to assume, like, if they're from Florida, maybe the, shun the Sunshine State, maybe they haven't experienced cold weather like this. But me being from the north, yeah, I'm used to it. I'm from Cleveland. We get, <laughs> we get four seasons you in a day. You hammered. Yeah, yeah. We get four seasons in a day. In the morning, it could be spring. In the afternoon, it will be summertime. At night, it'll be cold as winter. And then sometimes we'll throw a little bit of fall in there. So one of the members from your group reached out to me and said that you have an interesting story about controversial company Super Eagle. Uh, and I was like, okay, well, he, he told me a little bit. So I was like, all right, let me uh, let me go ahead and extend the invite to you to, uh, to bring you on and to uh, tell your story. So before we begin, you was what with, with controversial company Super Eagle? What were you? I was a driver, and I also did uh, mentorships with other drivers trying to help them succeed. And uh, I kind of helped with a little bit of everything at the company as far as advertising it, driver relations. If there was an issue with the driver, a driver had broke down on the side of the road, then... I'd help go ahead and make those calls for him. Okay, so not not only that you was that you was a a, a company driver, but you worked inside the office. I did not work inside the office. I had a laptop that I kind of just did everything on, and it was just kind of one driver to another driver. I feel like at this point and in this day and age, it's really hard to trust companies, and it's a lot easier to trust your fellow driver more than it is to trust somebody like Super Ego. And so that's what I was there for. Okay. Why did you decide to give Super Eagle a chance? When I first started, I didn't know a whole lot about it. And I'm really one of those hard-headed people where I read enough bad reviews and I saw enough bad videos that I was like, you know, I want to give this a chance because I know everybody has their own experience. And uh, I ended up leaving after four weeks because they didn't pay me at all. No statements, no pay, no nothing. And then they reached out to me after I left, and they had given me a sob story about how most of the people that were in the office were out on maternity leave or they were sick, and they were back in the office. They wanted to do better, and they wanted to be better for the drivers, and I came back, and that was probably the worst mistake I made. All right, so the first time you was there, you was only there for four weeks, so you, you was just at that point the, a driver? at that point or was you still a driver in a driver relations to the drivers i was just a driver at that point so i talked to a lot of drivers that that really haven't had that much time with the company and of course myself my channel get a little bit of backlash on bringing drivers that don't have that don't have that 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 weight of being there for like a year or something like that but for four weeks you got in there you 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 seen for yourself that it wasn't going to work out for you when when did the table started turning for you within that four weeks during like before i left yeah 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 so i mean i was nervous when i had already gotten there to do orientation because it's not a professional set. Nobody there really responds to the drivers professionally. And almost all the trucks have been urinated in or they have feces in them. They're just very, very filthy. So that made me nervous already. The building was set up like a refugee camp, which also made me extremely nervous. But I was told that, you know, it takes four weeks before it starts getting better. 
and it just it never got better. In fact, it, it got worse. I got eight dollar check my first week. I got a twenty nine dollar check my second week, and then I received no statements and no checks for the remaining two weeks before I left the first time. Okay. Wow. Eight. Eight. How? Okay. Before I go into a commentary on that part, I, I know from other drivers that I have talked to that for the first couple of weeks, you're, you're inspected not to get that much money because they taking out the, the cost of the truck, the cost of the fees and all sorts of stuff. So you you running, let's say you do maybe about two, well, y'all, y'all get paid percentage so let's say y'all do maybe about two three two three loads that should add up around maybe four thousand and then out of that four thousand the fees and everything and you should be able to take home at least a little something eight dollars on the first settlement like how many loads did you did did you do and how much did they actually take out i did four loads and the total gross was 7800 okay okay now we talking okay 7800 uh 88 percent supposed to go to you right it's supposed to i did notice that the first time i signed a contract with them in the contract it stated that the driver will receive 88 percent of the load and then the second contract that i signed it was 88% of the load offered. Okay, now I'm confused. So what do 88% of the load offered mean? Um, I, I'm not really sure, but I'm assuming that it's whatever they're choosing to offer you to run that load at that point, which I think a lot of drivers... It's the easiest way that these larger industries and these trucking companies kind of get us is we're in such a rush to sign these contracts, and a lot of us don't thoroughly read the fine print, and uh, we get we get messed over pretty bad. And it can change where you can the load is supposed to be paying say fifty one hundred, but they're deciding that they want to offer you twenty five hundred. It's what they're offering you at that point. Okay, so their sales pitch is eighty eight percent of the load. But in reality, it's anywhere between 50% to up to 88%, so to say. Am I am I correct in the saying that? Yeah. Okay, so let's get back to this eight dollar check, man. Like you you say you said the truck grows seventy eight hundred. How was the end result eight dollars? Like what happened? So looking back, I saw that they added a lot of charges that weren't supposed to be there, and then they doubled up on a lot of the charges that weren't supposed to be there. So I, after looking at it, I noticed there was a doubling up on the statements with fuel, or there was extra money added on to my fuel stops where if I stopped and I sold that for $520, my statement looked a lot closer to $580, $590. And it was just little things that they were doing there that I just wasn't catching at that point. Wow. Okay. So what was your feeling when you, when you opened up your, your email and, and you saw that, like you saw seven, you, you saw $7,800 I'm sure you was like, wow. And then when you look all the way down to the net and what they sent to your to your to your bank, eight dollars, how did that make you feel? And I think that's a feeling for a lot of us where you know, we're supposed to be excited when we open up those statements where we take a lot of pride in the work. A lot of us do. And um, we keep our trucks clean or we polish the wheels and you know, we do little things because we do take pride in our work, but when you open up something like that and you feel sick for that very first time, that feeling never goes away. So every single time your statement hits, it's just that, that gut-wrenching and turning feeling. I can imagine. Okay, so I'm assuming there was a call made to payroll, and I'm, I'm assuming that conversation wasn't a good conversation. So that's week one. You stayed for four weeks. So now we're in the second week. You 
you do it again, do a couple of good loads again, you go to open up your statement and now you only see $21 from a gro from a gross of what? Uh, that week it was just 61. I'm honestly surprised because I grossed last week and I got paid a couple dollars more. So you did 6100 and got $21 out of that. Okay. Uh, yeah, I did 6100. Okay, so so now you you must be feeling some kind of way now. I mean, you must be feeling like, hey, bro, what are we doing here? Like eight dollars last week, twenty one dollars this week, my guy. What what are we doing? What? Okay, so go up, before we go into the to the two weeks because you you spent another two weeks there before you before you caught it called it a day how did they get how did they get you to stay for those other two weeks after seeing a eight dollar check the first week and a 21 dollar check the second week um it was my stubbornness mostly and it was a whole lot of them drilling into my head you know it's getting better to see the prices going up and i should have used my head and realized that it wasn't going to go anywhere but I wanted to hang in there because I was told so many times that the first four weeks were the worst. That, ooh. Whoever told you that did not lie. I mean, $8. I, I, I don't know if I I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Maybe, maybe, like, I understand there's probably might be some adjustments on the driver's part. Or maybe, maybe I fueled up too much. Maybe... Maybe I got an expensive truck. Maybe, maybe that. Maybe I could make some adjustments. Maybe with the fuel and everything. But then the next following week, twenty-one dollars. Even after the adjustments, I, 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 I don't know if I could. I don't think I can. I don't think I would have would have stayed. I, I, I probably would have turned that truck in and said, "Well, we tried." All right, so the third and fourth week, I, I guess it didn't get no better. You left on the you left on the fourth week. You you called them up and what did you what did you tell them after you saw your fourth week statement just to let them know that hey, I gotta go. I I can't do it. So actually, on week three is when I started blowing them up because I did not ever receive my statement or my paycheck, and they kept giving me this front and round. And they said, you know what? Oops, there was a mix-up. We'll go ahead and add your third week paycheck onto your fourth week, which is how they kept me that other week. And then it didn't come. And at that point, the dispatcher had called me. I said, look. I'm not taking any more loads. I'm done. I'm going to another company. I have things set up. Come get your stuff. And at that point, it was nonstop threats. We're going to have you arrested. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. I said, well, turn on your fuel card, and I'll bring the truck and the tractor back to the yard. We're not doing that because you're going to steal fuel. Okay, well, then you need to come get your truck and your trailer. So at that point, I actually left it at another company that I went to, which is their competition company, and I didn't know that at the time. So they retrieved it, and then I kind of spoke to a few people about what was word of mouth, just kind of got around, and people from the uh, HR department started reaching out to me and asked me, you know, why did you leave? What happened? And I got in a heated discussion with them, and I told them that it was very upsetting because so many of us have kids, and we have spouses, and we have responsibilities. And not knowing whether you're going to get a check or not is a big problem. Not knowing whether you're going to be able to eat or not is a problem. And I was that driver that couldn't eat. And I was that driver that wrote on a cardboard sign that I was hungry. And I sat on the street corner waiting for somebody to help me eat. And I expressed how upsetting that was and how degrading that was and how embarrassing that was. Because if I'm working in an 18-wheeler, I'm working in one of the highest paying careers there are, but I'm still holding a cardboard sign begging for people to help me eat. And they promised me, they said, look, you look very passionate about helping other drivers. You know, that's great. We need somebody like that. You know, and they offered me, they're like, well, why don't you do this? And you help us clean out the bugs and you help us make the company better and work with drivers. So that's what I did coming back. Okay. 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 Coming back. Okay. So... 
where did you leave the tr- well that's another issue too i'm on the side of of the driver and on the side of the company they they'll turn off the car for fear of a driver to uh, if that driver felt like they doing the wrong of course they're gonna they're gonna retaliate and what better way to retaliate than going to a truck stop and be like, hey, bro, I, I give you about two, three hundred dollars of fuel for like one hundred and fifty. Yeah. A lot of us, the best form of retaliation, because Super Ego has such a high turnover rate and they have so many people coming in every day. The biggest sense of pride and retaliation that we could possibly do as drivers is returning our trucks full of a lot full of brand new drivers and expressing why we're quitting. But some of us never get that opportunity because they shut off our fuel cards. Well, they trying to stop y'all from, from coming up in there to, 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 to give you guys, uh, to give you guys opinions on the company to the new drivers. They doing that for real, for real. Like, I mean, they, they literally don't want disgruntled drivers coming back to the, the office for fear that they would disrupt the new drivers from coming on. Yes, and they take that very heavily now. They will shut off the fuel cards and make it to where um, they are very, very quick to have somebody's trailer and truck picked up, and that's just so we won't come back to the yard. Wow. It's been done a few times where drivers that were quitting came back to the yard, and they detoured about 100 drivers. Wow. So that's like, that's like, hey, bro, hey, where, where are you going, sir? Hey, I'm about to take this truck back to the yard. Hey, we need you to go that way. Go this way, man. Hey, my man, go this way, man. Go that way, man. No, nah, man, go that way. Go this way, man. Hey, my man, go this way, man. Go that way, man. I uh, don't go that way. Go that way. Go this way, man. Hey, my man, go this way, man. Go that way, man. Them niggas don't seem to understand me out here, B. Yeah, but I'm 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 returning the truck. Yeah, we we got it. we here. Go over to go over there and. Park it over there. <laughs> Ooh, wow. Oh, man, that's 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 crazy. So you kind of gave them an ultimatum. Where where were you in conjunction of 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 them coming to picking up the truck so quick to where that to to where you was at when you told them to come and pick up the truck? Um, so initially I was going to leave it at a love truck stop in a parking spot. However, that truck being my only form of transportation to and from the new job that I had started also in Chicago, it turns out that company didn't have too many nice things to say about super ego. And I needed a safe spot to put the truck. And I said, Hey, so can I park it here till somebody can come pick it up? It's gated. And they said, absolutely. So Super Ego had to go pick up their truck from the competitor company. Man, so the competitor company didn't mind you parking somebody else's truck there? No, absolutely not. They actually said it was a pretty regular occurrence. And they didn't do anything to the trucks. They didn't tamper with the trucks. But they were definitely overjoyed when a Super Ego driver had to come. In fact, Super Ego stopped sending drivers to go to other businesses to pick up their trucks. They actually have imp- or they have tow trucks to get them out now. And then the tow trucks will tow them to our tow yard and the drivers will go pick them up there because when drivers go to pick up the trucks from the different companies, they start asking questions. They like a different offer better, and then they lose one of their drivers. Okay. I feel them on that one. I feel them on that one because if I was to go and pick up a truck from a competitor company and they'd be like, hey, come over here to us. We'll treat you a lot better. Hey, listen, I quit. And he did quit his job. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm good. Which I thought was a little weird. I mean... See, and that happened quite a bit. They went from actually picking up my truck to picking up three different Super Ego trucks because they all transferred. Okay, so now you at the new company. How long you was there at the new company before Super Ego kind of sweetened the pot for you to come back? I was there for about two weeks. So after the first go around with Super Ego, they called you, sweetened the pot, and but you, but you, you haven't gotten paid like you haven't even gotten paid good at Super Ego. Why, why would why give them the benefit of the doubt to go back to them again? Oh, so my biggest thing was thinking that they actually wanted to do right by the drivers because when they had contacted me 
they had physically looked up at the money that I was missing, and then they did pay me those two weeks that I was missing. And they paid that by EFS check. They did that up front before I even made the decision to come back to the company. Okay, shout out to them for doing that. Okay, so you you bounce back to the company, but this time as a not only as a driver but as a what, what do you call it driver assistant driver it was driver relations and i was also a driver advocate okay and all of this is on paper at super eagle yes okay so not only that you was getting 88 percent, but you was also getting paid directly as an office worker as well. I was not getting paid as an office worker. No. They had originally told me beforehand that they wanted to compensate me for doing that. One, I never heard back. And when I did, it was at a point where I had heard, I had really built some strong relationships with these drivers. They became family and their families became my family. And it didn't feel like something I should have been paid to do. So I declined payment even when they did offer it. You did what? I don't. That's on me. I declined. I did what you had to do. No, no, ma'am. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. You, you, you working at a multi-billion dollar company. You, you, you don't do nothing. Right. You, you don't do no favors. Fa favors is only it done. It wasn't. Fa no, no. Favors is only done <laughs> when you're a new driver, brand new driver, don't know nothing driver. Don't don't know what, you what don't to even do, do driver. Favors then. Right, yeah, that's true too. But you, you when you come in here, you're a new driver, you 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 want to get on the good side of a dispatcher and the dispatcher be like, "Hey, can you do this favor for me and I'll look for a longer load for you?" Of course that driver going to be like, "Yeah." Yeah, yeah, but no, no, ma'am, no, ma'am, especially. So if they called me, if they called me to go do recoveries, I wasn't doing that, but it didn't feel like I was doing any favors for the company directly. It felt like I was doing favors for the drivers. Okay, oh, granted. If you're good at something, never do it for free. How much you will? Uh, half. We're we're not doing nothing for free. No, not for a, no no. I'm I'm driving the truck and I'm a <laughs> I'm I'm an advocator for the drivers and I'm in driver relations too. No, you you got to come out of the pocket a little bit more than that. All right, so you of course built a lot of relations with some of these drivers and of course they're coming to you with with their problems. You're going back to the company with their problems. What are the company, what at that time, what was the company doing to solve those problems? Uh, so just to back step a little bit, the reason why I decided to decline payment, and I said I feel like I shouldn't be paid for it, is because they didn't actually offer anything until about six, seven weeks of me being back. At that point, I had heard horror stories from these drivers. I had heard of drivers losing their homes. I've lost my home. I was actually homeless during that time that I was doing that for other drivers. And finding out that Super Ego wasn't really doing anything to resolve those issues made me feel like I was anything that those drivers should have been getting paid, they were utilizing to pay me. And that was at that point, that's dirty money. I don't want dirty money. Okay. So now, how, how are the payment? Well, how are the settlements now? Because you're back, you you stay by the sounds of it six weeks or so. How was the settlements looking then, after your after your second time around? They were looking a lot better. I spent close to a year with that company when I came back, and they were they were definitely looking a lot better. I was I was happy with the rates. However, I thought what I was getting, everybody was getting. And over the months, these last few months, I realized that that's not exactly what was happening. The things that I was seeing, and they, they used to tell me, you know, you, you get special treatment because you do so much good for this company. But I was treated horribly at that company. I was verbally abused all the time. I was called names. 
and my pay was always threatened against me if I didn't speak positively about the company. And instead of handling these issues with drivers, which is what I wholeheartedly expected them to do, they just wanted me to delete the problems and silence the drivers. So these issues just remained unsolved, and it made it to where drivers were losing their homes. Some drivers ended up going into a divorce with their significant others because of the stress they could take it. And they were taking that anger out on their loved ones. It caused a lot of issues and super ego destroyed a lot of homes very quickly. Man, this is crazy. So now a year, a year in with the company is starting to go back downhill with, with you yourself being threatened. Like, I mean, what was some of the, what was some of the threats if, if you're able to talk about it? I can't say what all was actually said, but they were life-threatening. I mean, they were very, very upset and very adamant that I was going to take down my page and I was going to silence drivers. And if I didn't, then there was going to be repercussions. Man. Okay. Now, is this all while you was there? No. The duration that I was there the last six months was when they started getting very vindictive and very malicious towards me. And that was just because I went from not having a voice to trying to find my voice again. And, you know, with them telling me what to do, I obviously came back with questions of why delete the problem when you could just solve the problem and not hear about it again. You know, why don't you just fix the issue and then it was well fixing the issues is going to cost us too many money or too much money and then that's going to cause us to let us on a few things and you know we have a certain way of how we do things and one thing that they would always tell me is these guys are having issues because they came over with a company driver mindset you cannot become an owner operator with a company driver mindset and that was drilled into my head for a while and I had a experience while helping somebody non-related to the company, but somebody had gotten stuck. And uh, I had used my truck trying to pull them out of the mud because it was just really bad. It was in New Orleans. And anybody that's been in New Orleans knows that when it rains, it rains. It floods. It gets bad. It gets dangerous. It gets life-threatening. So we were trying to pull him out, and he, we, I didn't have any chains. He didn't have any chains. So he brought out some tow trucks that he had, and which is a little hot shot driver. And I spent about an hour and a half trying to pull this guy out. And I watched this tow strap snap, and we tie it together, and it would snap again. And then we tie it together and snap again. And this went on where we just kept retying it, and nothing worked. And it got to a point where I was like, hey, man, I'm sorry. You know, you're going to have to call a record. You're just too far into the mud at this point and I got to head out and when we headed out I had asked my husband and I said did he by chance offer you anything at all or did he tell you kind of like more about what he does and he said nope not at all I said okay and I was like well that's fine but after sitting and thinking about it I talked to one of my really good friends who also used to be with the company Super Ego and he said, you know, it's kind of like what you're doing right now. And I said, what are you talking about? And he said, it's kind of what you're doing with Super Ego. They're tying the rope. It's breaking. They're making you try it again. It's the definition of insanity. They're using you. They're not paying you for what you're doing. They're not even paying you for driving. And it made a whole lot of sense. And it kind of cleared my head to see that the things that Super Ego makes look normal are definitely not normal. Man, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry to... I'm sorry to hear to hear all that was going on. In situations like that, let's say if a truck driver gets stuck, let's say he's off in the ditch and he needs to get wrecked out or tow, is that is is that coming out of his settlement? It is. Wow. So so everything pertaining to the truck is the driver's responsibility. Correct. So if the trucks are are crap like some of you guys say how would you guys be able to pick out a good truck that would that would at least give you about six or seven months of no problems in 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 making money um so a lot of us do it different ways some of us go with the newest trucks on the lot that we can get 
and try to stay away from the older ones. Some of us go with how clean the inside of the truck is. They super you know, does not let us test drive these trucks. So we have a lot to do this on. And if we can figure out exactly what issues are wrong with the truck before our wheels hit right outside that threshold, that main street, that public road, every single thing that happens, we could roll straight out to that public street and doors could fall off and our hoods can fall off and Super Ego is going to laugh at us and say, we'll fix it. Don't worry. It's on us. But then it comes out of your state. So it's probably my best to get a mechanic to go with you to uh, to overlook the to overlook the trucks to eat to give you a a little bit of stamp of approval and sometimes that's not good enough myself and my husband we are both diesel mechanics we are certified and we specialize in diesel mechanics and my first go around i can't tell you that there is absolutely zero way without test driving that truck had i known that it was going to have as many issues as it did what about the second go around what did did you have what, what kind of issues you had the second go around with the truck um none the only way to actually have a cheat code to get a perfectly good running truck is it needs to be the brand new truck with little to no miles on it and it needs to come off the dealer's lot and it needs to be basically what they call rescued those are the more i'm going to assume the more expensive trucks as well are those the are those the money down trucks uh some are some aren't so the 2024s i don't know why they're telling people it's five thousand down it's not five thousand down I did not have to put 5000 down on my truck. There's about 30 more drivers that I could tell you that also got brand new 2024 straight off the lot. They did not have to put 5000 down. Fleet managers said that the only reason that we're getting these trucks for zero down is because the 2025s are coming in. But I did see that they're still advertising 5000 down on the 2024s. Okay, okay. So you... Got a little bit of the inner workings of of controversial company Super Eagle. How I know they got like multiple. Well, I call it multiple shell companies. Of course, Eagle is the holding, but there's multiple companies up under it. Companies like Rocket, Jordan, Time, and several others. Being that you had like a little bit of inner workings with the company, how many shell companies are they running all together? Approximately 12. What are the names of them? I know most of them. I don't know all of them just because I know that they are actively in the process of having to shut down some carriers just due to their numbers being so bad. And so many brokers won't work with certain carriers over there now. So there's Tri-Time, there's Windy City, Jordan Holdings. Expedited Holdings, Twin Carriers, Cordage, I think I'm saying it right, Rocket. There's, yeah, there's so many of them, honestly. So when when a driver comes in to to drive for Super Eagle, they, I guess they would get hired by Super Eagle, but they would get paid by one of those shell companies, which... Which one of those shell companies was, was your settlement coming from? It's right time. Oh, okay. Okay. So, again, like I said before, so Ego is, is just more of a holdings company, but you guys will be responsible. Well, not you guys be responsible, but the responsibility of paying the drivers lie on one of their shell companies. Um, that's the way they represent it. That's not the way it works. They have one payroll department in Belgrade, Serbia, that pays out everything and everyone. Okay. So they're, so the one payroll will pay y'all, but on the settlement, it will be what you said. What was it? Time? Time? Try time. Try time. Okay. Wow. Why Why do you think that is, is I mean, they making money hand over foot. Why why is this so much of a problem there? Like why why is there so many drivers that are having problems there? Super ego within itself is very, very greedy. And 
big dish review, all these carriers and all these different DOTs to different drivers, because most of the time when you're suing a company, you're suing that company. So if I were to sue and I didn't know what I was doing, I would sue try time indirectly. Now let's say I won and I won my judgment against try time and the attorney general got a hold of that. They would shut down the carrier try time. But that would not affect the additional 11 companies that have active DOTs. They would just distribute every driver that is under dry time to different carriers, such as Windy City, Jordan, Rocket, you name it. However, they feel like they're in the clear doing what they're doing because nobody, well, they think nobody has actually moved forward and gone after the brains of the operation, which is, Super Eco, a.k.a. Floyd. And they're going to find out very quickly that that is not the case. There's over 1,500 drivers that are going after Floyd itself. Okay. Again, we're back to the inner workings of a controversial company, Super Eagle. We already touched on uh, a lot of subjects with this company. Uh, before I get to the most controversial subject of the company, what about the company? What about the drivers that claims that they are winning with Super Eagle? Like, I mean, there's there's a there's a handful of drivers that that make some bold statements that they're actually making money, they're making good money, and they're not have they they're not having no problems with controversial company Super Eagle. They just wish that all the all, all the subpar drivers, they, they just wish that they just go somewhere. They just go away. Have you came across any of those drivers that's that's actually that's actually being successful with the company? And if so, what, what, what are their stories like? So I was one of them, and uh, I, I was one of those people that made bold statements, and I really, really did not want to. But it was at a point where I was homeless, I wanted to get, I'm sorry, I wanted to get my kids back home with me. I wanted to go home. And uh, they knew that. And they used our situations against us quite often. And they threaten our pay. And the reason why we're getting better paying loads or quote unquote special treatment is because we're freely advertising the company. And these are not statements that any of us really want to make. And there's a lot of us that we're telling drivers the actual truth. We were just doing it through private message, trying to give those drivers a warning of what they were going to get themselves into. In my opinion, nobody actually is successful with Super Ego. I think it's as long as you're under their microscope and you're saying what they want you to say and you can't be who you want, you're not successful and you're absolutely miserable throughout the entire process. So these drivers that's claiming on these super ego videos that they are happy with the company that they making money with the company will it be safe to say that they are paid actors they're not getting paid to do it but they are having things held against them to do it if they don't do what super ego wants them to do they get threatened okay okay i don't ah jeez I know a lot of these, a lot of these drivers that comes in, and I know a few of them that gets not with just controversial company Super Eagle, but I I know when they come in to like new companies, that company will turn around and be like, if you have a large social media following, if you have a large YouTube page or a large TikTok page, they they would they would tend to be a little bit more lenient with them because of the fact that they have that large audience and super ego can leverage that i mean do i mean do they do they suggest that in in orientation suggest what like do they do they like kind of ask you like hey do you have a, a social media page or a facebook page or a youtube page or something like that do do they know that you don't do that but they don't do that through orientation, but they will reach out independently. I know that they are offering drivers right now incentive to do that. 
they are telling some YouTubers, if you make videos about the company, and if you can prove that you received a thousand views, we'll pay you five hundred dollars. So be equal. I need y'all to reach. So they are paying people. I'm going to. There's and some of these drivers, most of these YouTubers, either a they're not truckers, or b they have a very, very, very hefty background that can be used against them. One of the, and I won't name him, one of them is on probation. The other one is a registered sex offender. <laughs> these, these people, they, they got stuff that can be used against them, but the company is also entertaining them by giving them new equipment or making sure that they exceed anywhere from eight to 10,000 a week, or they're giving them reefer units while the rest of us that are working so hard, we're not receiving those. I've myself tried to get a reefer unit multiple times. I find it impossible to do as well as thousands of others. Uh, and I've requested it twice, maybe three times. And it went from, you'll get a, in the beginning it was, yeah, you'll get a reefer unit after six months. And then the second time, well, there's a possibility to get one after six months and then when I had pointed out to them I, I see I see people getting reefer units and I don't understand why the rest of us are having so many issues getting into them. Uh, their response was it's a requirement to get a reefer after six months. However there's a lot of us that have been there longer than six months and we never saw a reefer. Wow. Man, so many incentives. Okay. So let's continue on with the inner workings. Uh, Super Ego is one of the companies that claims that they will help drivers that's in the in the FMCSA's clearinghouse, i.e. SAP drivers. How many how, how many of those drivers have you came across and have Super Eagle actually helped them out with their return to duty status, if any? I have come across none that have actually been successful with the company. There's only certain things that you can do to become successful with the company, and that's if you're talking good about the company. Because if you're not talking good about the company, you're not getting anything. But they do accept SAP drivers, though, right? They do. I'm sorry, they do? They do. Okay, but you haven't came across any that that had any problems with their return to duty status as far as getting a random test done or anything like that, right? So what I can say is if you're a SAP driver, Super Ego is the worst possible company that you could contract with. It's almost like slave trade work, and they will use your status against you in every way possible they if you upset them you will get random units around the clock it will affect your load or your ability to deliver loads on time they that's one of the things that they use against drivers over as super ego wow so when a sap driver do call the company and be like hey do you guys accept sap drivers and are you sap friendly of course, the recruiters are going to be like, yeah, yeah, we, 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 yeah, we help you out. But then when they get them in there, they use, they, they use, they, uh, they use that against them when they get in there. Yeah, they use their status against them. And it's just, if you're homeless and you're trying to get into a truck, if you are a SAP driver, and you have a status, don't, don't go there because they will use that to the fullest extent against you. Wow. All right. So again, with with the inner workings of of a controversial company, Super Eagle, have you, being a driver yourself, have have the law department reached out to you to extend, or let me say this, have they reached out to you to offer help in getting the load to where they where the load needs to be on time? I wouldn't call it help. They tell you that. If they don't do that, then they'll leave you sitting empty for 24 to 48 hours. And most of the time, they do it without even calling you. They have the ability to add hours and take away hours just as quick. So they won't even give you the courtesy, like, hey, bud, we need about five, ten minutes to get uh, get on down the road. They, they, they'll just give it to you. They'll just do it. They don't really give anybody the option to do or dare at all. And it's just one big trap. So is it true 
that you guys will run multiple clocks there with 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 different names is that is that true with that over there yes yeah no they'll have a each driver will have access at least to two to three clocks how okay so let me ask you this how is that possible like I mean, let's say if you get pulled in to to the way station, you gotta bring your you gotta bring your clock in there. And let's say the clock was just recently reset and you have to show them your driver's license, but your clock is up under a different name. How how can how can a company get over on DOT with that? The only way that I have seen them do it. And the way that it was explained to me by the HR department, and I, I just I have to say HR department, I can't say anything or anyone in specific, is a lot of your drivers will start out, they'll go through orientation, they'll ask for a load going through home to load up their trucks, which is not abnormal. A lot of drivers do it. Almost all of us do it. And then they'll repo their trucks while they're loading things into it, claiming that they were trying to steal the trucks. They then use that clock that was just set up for somebody else and then they transfer our information between the clocks. Okay. So if you guys, let, let's say, uh, let, let's take a driver like myself, and I'm I'm a big proponent of protecting my CDL. If I know that the load is going to be on time or late, because I do that with trip planning, I do that with 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 everything I need to do, and if I know that load is going to be late or if I'm not going to make that load in time, I will call up my fleet manager and be like, hey, bro, let's see if we can let them know that I'm going to be late or something like that because I'm about to shut down, do my 10 hour and then let them know what time I'll be there in the morning. You mean to tell me if I reach out to a, to a super ego dispatcher and relay that information to him, would I be forced to drive up under a new clock to get that load there at the time that it needs to be there? Nine out of 10 times, yes. They, If you try to tell them that you need to rest or that you need a 10 hour down, you'll, you'll be greeted with a whole lot of, we're going to lose this contract with the broker. It's going to be your fault. It's going to go under your MVR. It's, it's a lot. And then a lot of us just end up giving up and saying, okay, because they'll threaten to leave us sitting after it, or they'll make comments very discreetly stating, okay, well, when you get this dropped off, I don't know when I'm going to be able to get you loaded again because you're in a bad area. Now, I heard of a lot of drivers say that. They'll get a, they'll get a good load going into a certain area, get it there on time, yada, yada, yada. But then when they're in that area, they're be they being treated with a subpar loads or a subpar rates and all like that. And you guys be like, no, I'm not taking that. And then they force you to sit for a couple of days until you turn around and be like, man, okay, yeah, get give give me that load so I can at least get out of here. That's still going on there? It's still a very real issue of super ego. It's super ego's personalized way of retaliating against us drivers without making it obvious. So again, with all of this is going on, and and again, Jane Doe, thank you, you know, for coming on and sharing your story. But with with all this is going on, I mean, it goes back to the question of why are these drivers? calling themselves trying to give super ego the benefit of the doubt i mean we hear we hear all these stories we we hear we we see the reviews we see the groups we see the comments we see the pay stubs we see it why why am i still going to give super ego the benefit of the doubt why 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 would i do that let's not blow this out of proportion you think you could steal from us and just walk away yeah if you're hard-headed you want to have an experience you want to see if you can prove anybody wrong you want to be able to say hey i did it look at me and from what i'm going through now it's not worth it it's not worth that hey look at me i did it i accomplished this 
because there is no accomplishing anything as super ego. You will miss your children's everything while working there. My brother passed away. They wouldn't even let me go to his funeral. Another coworker missed the birth of his child. Um, you will get so wrapped up in that competitive behavior of, I want to show people that I can do it because I saw so many people fail, that you'll ruin yourself in the process. That's why people still go there. They want to be able to say, hey, look, I did it. From your from your little bit of time of being there, from being a driver, from being from seeing the inner workings and everything like that, have you seen any drivers that would that would come and actually debunk debunk anything that you said here tonight? Like say it's lying. Well, say like like somebody will come in and be like, yeah, okay, yeah, I, I don't believe her, yada yada yada. Do you feel that anybody there would? Would debunk anything you had said tonight? Absolutely. Absolutely. 100%. Because those drivers are being offered exactly what I was being offered at one point, and they don't understand that there's no special treatment there. Nobody gets treated any type of good. Everybody gets treated like garbage. I've seen racial profiling going on. I've seen discrimination go on. I've seen them talk horribly about other drivers. There's no contract to confidentiality. It doesn't exist. While I was there, if I needed any information about any driver at all, they told me. Or I would get random messages saying, hey, this person is talking bad about the company. Um, I need you to go and kind of fight this battle. And this is what you need to know about them. And this is how long they were there. And there's no privacy there. I, I see what Super Eagle is doing. They're, they're trying to reach out to a lot of people, especially a lot of influencers such as myself, because I, I was reached out by a few people at controversial company Super Eagle to offer me some type of a conversation to talk good about the company, this, that, and the third. I mean, I was just recently in an email conversation with was somebody that claims that they that they had ties to controversial company Super Eagle, but of course the the back and forth between me and that whoever that person was kind of seceded. I was reached out by by them by way of DM and my Instagram because they they liked Super Eagle would like all my all my posts and all like that and then they finally came around and dm me and asked me hey what what can we do to get an interview or 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 come out to the company and 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 talk to somebody there i like that what can we do to to get you to come how much i like that so doing the dm conversation i mean i was like I, you guys must not see my 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 channel i mean i i got plenty of drivers disgruntled drivers drivers that wasn't happy drivers i i probably got maybe one two at the most that uh, that that talks good about the company but majority of them well they got some horror stories like so i'm like you guys must not see my 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 channel are, are you sure you you looking at my channel <laughs> the the offer me me out of all people to come there and 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 try to show what's 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 could be good for the company i guess i don't know i mean doing the dm conversation i i kind of like turned them down but doing the email conversation i was like well hey you give me the same amount of money that you gave the other YouTuber, then yeah, maybe I might just come down there and pretend that I'm going to a basketball game and 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 say that I just do a pop up over here. I'll do that, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna cookie cut my questions because I'm sure they'll probably bring me in the office and be like, well, before we go on camera, we want you to ask this questions and all like that no 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 i'm do you ask these questions because you want to know the answer i'm going to ask the hard-hitting questions like why are you guys have a lawsuit or 
Why you guys this, that, and the third? Why 90% of the drivers feel some kind of way? Those are the type of questions that I'm going to ask. Are you sure? Those are the type of questions. They don't, they don't want you to ask those questions. Right. right. They will pull you in the office when you get there, and they will tell you only to say certain things. They've done this with about three other YouTubers that had major platforms such as yourself. They've got in there, and they completely changed everything when those people got there, and they said, hey, this is what you're going to say. I wrote out a script. This is what I need you to do. And if you say, oh, that wasn't a part of the agreement, wait, I, I could pull that up right here. This is what we're going to do. They're going to say, that's not what we're paying you for, and if you're not going to do what we're paying you to do, then you're going to need to leave. See? See? I, I, listen, I know. I believe. <laughs> I know. I know. That's why I said if you're going to see the thing with me is because, see, I I and I'm just speculating about other YouTubers that did that did a expose a controversial company, Super Eagle. I'm, I'm sure that they was paid. They, they must have been paid a, 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 a significant amount, especially by putting the company in a good light, a very good light, I should say. And they probably got compensated well, okay? But like I said, during the DM conversation with me, they was offering, they was lowballing me. Like, hey, we would give you X amount of dollars for the conversation. And I'm like, are you sure you <laughs> want me? Because like I said, the first time I reached, I reached out to you guys was like a couple of years ago when I did the, when I did the make the call. But that was because... I made the call, but now you're, you, you, you became, con instead of Super Eagle at that time, now you became controversial company Super Eagle. So yeah, I, I want to get paid. And like I said, during the email conversation, yeah, we, 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 we was talking like dollars, but like I said, I would get in, into the office and they'll be like, okay, well, we want you to ask these questions or talk to this particular driver or talk to that driver or or we want you to say this about the company. No, I no, I'm not no, I'm not gonna do that. It's me. Me lockout men. You me. The, I, mm -mm. So yeah, I guess uh, That's what they do there. I guess I would I, I I guess they would have to escort me out the door because I I I'm gonna be like, hey bro, hey, how they treating you over here, my guy? Talk to me. Tell me the truth. Don't don't do the security guards. Don't do them. There's been several reports of one of their re or security guards being extremely racist and racially profiling on one of the drivers he did it to. And I was absolutely okay with somebody doing that to me. But what I wasn't okay with was there was a gentleman there who was in the Marines and he was honorably discharged. And this guy was racially profiling him so bad. And I, I lost my father in 2003. And he was a master gunning sergeant in the Marines for over 25 years. I have a very special place in my heart for military, especially the ones that are willing to risk their lives and do that. But they they don't care about us. In a sense, we are the asses to fill the seats to keep their company running. And I think that, in a sense, they have forgotten that. Well, Jane Doe, again, I, I definitely appreciate you coming over and sitting down with me and, and, and sharing your stories with us over here, man. So back to the inner workings of, of, of Super Eagle, you're you you're now you you now left you started a facebook group you you're still an advocate for the drivers over at super eagle even though you're not uh, with the company anymore in one of your facebook posts you said super eagle is still is still harassing you why before all this started it was a wednesday we get paid on fridays and i was contacted by a lady in the hr department and she told me that if I did not silence the drivers, if I did not delete the negative comments, if I did not remove them from my group, then I would not receive a paycheck. And like I told her, that's a very easy decision for me to make. I said, keep my paycheck. 
And they have now realized that there is a lot of people that are finding their voices and they don't like that. They don't like me talking and they don't like me sharing a personal experience or sharing evidence or anything of what somebody can expect. So they have been threatening to hurt me if I don't take down my page. They've been threatening to have me arrested for falsifying information on my page, which I haven't. I have been in contact with the police department. I do have lawyers that are watching this very, very closely. They are not taking it lightly because it is a very, very serious issue going on over there. And Super Ego does not like that. And they have now understood that intimidating me is not going to work and trying to silence me is not going to work. So they're now starting to do what they do to just about everybody they don't like. They're threatening, no, I'm going to call the police. I'm going to have you arrested. The one that I received today was that they were going to arrest me for the theft of my truck. I don't have my truck, which I actually have them on recording admitting that they have both the truck and the trailer already. I've had somebody tamper with my seal. They had busted the seal. They did not want me to let the broker know that they had busted the seal on the trailer, which legally I'm obligated to let that broker know. And I did. They are very, very, very upset with me right now because I have, according to them, I have costed them a lot of money. So the second go around, you left. Where where did you leave the truck at this time? So originally the trailer was left in Missouri. I had to run home to deal with an issue with my child. For a lot of people that know me and know my children. I have a very sweet four-year-old, but he is a nonverbal autistic child and he has meltdowns that are, yeah, I see it. They're absolutely terrible. And I needed to rush home to deal with that. I was close enough. And uh, when I was heading back, I had realized that once again, they shut my fuel card off. And that's when they informed me about the seal. I said, I asked them, I said, why did you have another driver go to my equipment and tamper with it? And he said, well, you said I answered your phone the day prior, which I was at the hospital with my son the day prior. Yes. Yeah. And I said, okay, well, they said, well, you're going to be in a lot of trouble. I said, you guys are going to be in a lot of trouble because what you guys just did was a felony. You guys cannot break the seals on people's trailers simply because they are not answering their phone. Um, since that occurred, they're claiming different people in the department are claiming they never got their tractor unit back. And every single time they message me or they call me now threatening to have me arrested or threatening to have me hurt because I have not shut down my page. My response is the same each and every time. Anything that we are going to go further with, I will have representation. I will contact them. All right. So the, so the trailer is in Missouri. The, the card is shut off. So where did you park? Where did you finally park the truck? The truck was left on the side of the highway almost to because I was trying to fuel up. So it was Indiana and Illinois border, which I had told multiple people about that. And they had confirmed that they had gotten the truck. But now they're saying that they never got the truck. Wait, 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 Jane, though. Hold, hold up. Hold up. You on this on a literal side of the road like you're on you you on 280 what is it 285 you on 285 you on 55 you in illinois you on 80 you you pulled over to the shoulder and 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 left the truck there that's what i'm hearing like there yeah, i didn't have any fuel to go in the truck there you did not have no fuel so you ran out of fuel pulled over to the side and uh, of course, I'm sure you had your peoples to come and pick you up because I'm sure you wasn't wasn't like going to stay there off, off the side of the road trying to beg them to turn the car back on. But you told them that so the truck is there. So initially when I asked them to, when I told them to turn the car back on, they knew where I was. I was at a, a truck stop. I was at a 1-9. And they refused to turn it on. They kept giving me the runaround. I told them they kept demanding that I go back to the trailer. That part, I understand you guys wanted me with my trailer, but the only way I'm getting back to my trailer is if you turn on the fuel card. They, they decided not to do. I ran out. I told them that I ran out. I told them where I was at. Um, I did not receive a response back. I, at that point, called Highway Patrol, and I notified them that I was going to have to leave that truck there. Whether they had it towed or impounded, I don't know, but I can tell you that the state of Illinois and the DOT officers out here do not like super ego i can imagine so you called you you called state troopers so they they came over to assist you to where you need to be 
to get somewhere safe? State troopers are the ones that actually transported me back to the truck stop so that way I could be picked up by my husband. Wow. So you did let them know, like, hey, the truck is right there on I, on I, whatever, and then that's it. I mean, they 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 wouldn't even give you the they wouldn't even give you the courtesy to turn the truck, the fuel car back on so you can at least get back to the trailer. You going back to the trailer? You going back to the trailer, yo? Yeah. When they told me that the film was tampered with, my response was and i was very hostile i was very upset about that because it is a felony to do that it is a felony to tamper with somebody else's equipment i told them that my next steps were to call the broker that i was in direct contact with let them know and i was bringing the police with me to have an investigation done granted i did call the police i mean by the time they got to the truck stop the police alerted me that the trailer was no longer there which obviously caused concern And then I was told by the broker that they had repowered the load and that somebody else had already picked up the other load. So they picked up that trailer before a formal investigation could be done on it. Okay. Wow. So they already, they, they already had plans of stranding you then. Oh Oh, yeah. They had a full blown plan in place. I know they did. They thought that they were going to get me stranded. However, I'm, Definitely happy, looking back on it, that they shut the fuel card off when they did because I wasn't too far from home. Man, oh, man, man. I lucked out, but there's a lot of drivers that don't get that lucky. Wow. That is, that is, that is something. All right. So, Jane Doe, where, where, where are you, where are you with this, this, this class action lawsuit that's going on with a controversial company, Super Eagle? Are are you are you part of that lawsuit or no? I am a part of the lawsuit, and I have been working with the lawyers from that lawsuit. I will not name the lawyers that I am working with, but I have been working very closely with them, getting what's called victim statements from a lot of the drivers, and I'm handing over any and all evidence that I have, especially the admissions from the ladies in the HR department about how that operation is. Now, this class, now, this particular class action lawsuit with the drivers has been going on for quite a while. Is there, is, is there any updates that you can, that you can provide for us as far as, is there going to be an end in sight or is the drivers going to get compensated? So drivers are definitely going to be compensated. I can't say whether there is an end in sight or not. I believe there is especially with the new evidence that we have on the table right now, just between all of us drivers and lawyers, I can say that every part of Super Ego is a target right now. Floyd is the direct person that is going to be going after, and each of the carriers is also being gone after. So there's not going to be an out for Super Ego as far as well, let's shut down this carrier then and go ahead and transfer drivers over this. No, the hell the hell that they put us through, the torture that they put us through, and the abuse that they put us through. I'm very, very hopeful that there is an end near. Okay. Okay, drivers. There's there's a there's there's an end coming for you guys. Ho- hopefully uh, hopefully uh, you guys will be will be happy with the with the with the settlement. Man. Man, I Awesome conversation, Jane Doe. Thank you very much. I mean, this. I mean, this. This is. A, it's. This is an eye opening. This. This is an eye opening. I mean, it's. A, I mean, wow. I mean, hopefully after after this, maybe, maybe new drivers that's that's thinking about going to a controversial company, Super Eagle, would would listen listen to this this episode right here and and probably say hey maybe maybe i may, maybe i should not go to super eagle with that said what companies in illinois will will be will be an alternative because uh, it, it seems as though a lot of the quote unquote mafia mafia out there <laughs> they they all work on they all work on the same, how can I say this? The same correlation. 88% of the load, uh, least purchase, uh, no money down, $3,000 a week. I mean, it seems as though that's 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 the, the criteria 
of of the black ops companies out in Illinois. But what out of all of that, what would be alternative to controversial company Super Eagle? Like, what would be the company to go to other than controversial company Super Eagle out in Illinois? With my research, talking to different drivers, looking at reviews, so far the only company that I've actually found based out of Chicago is a company called MN89. Um, you get the original rate comes there. You gotta, you get to talk to the brokers a little bit more transparent. You get a fuel surcharge back. I mean, obviously, if you can avoid going to companies in Chicago, you probably should. Probably not a bad idea to just avoid it altogether. But MN89 does actually have some good perks to it. So M N. M as in Mary, N as in Nancy, eighty nine out of Illinois. You you would you would recommend that company over controversial company Super Eagle? Any day, any day. They're much more transparent over there, and it seems as though they actually care about the drivers over there. Well, there you have it, drivers. M M as in Mary, N as in Nancy, eighty nine. Now, listen, hey, drivers, listen, if y'all have any stories about MN, MN89, leave it in the comments below. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about them, too. But but for right now, right now, Jane Doe is recommending MN89. All right. Well, thank you very much, ma'am. I do appreciate the time, man. That's That's the baby in the background. Yeah, that's one of my boys. My my sister, her her child is is autistic. Being a truck driver, being being a female truck driver, being a mom truck driver, being a truck driver of a special needs kind of special needs kid, how how hard is that for you? It's easy. It's easy. I think until you got to realize how long you have to be away from them. I think that's for both mothers and fathers. Once you realize that you actually have to be away from your children for so long, that's the hardest part. We're out here and we're making sacrifices to take care of our families at home. And we're just being taken advantage of in the process of doing that. We're wasting time with our families. You said earlier in our conversation that that your son had had a meltdown and being a brother of of my sister, my nephew, he has epic meltdown. So I I understand where you're coming from when you when you mentioned that. Um and you had to go home to actually calm him down. Being away from him is is hard emotionally. But of course you mentioned that you got your husband. So your husband is there to to help out, but when but when your son gets to that point of needing his mother how how do you handle that over the while you are over the road? Do you do like video chat or something like that so that your son could see you or something like that? We we do a lot of FaceTime calls. I sing to him every day. But my son, when he has a meltdown, it gets really bad. And this last meltdown that he had, which was why it was so much of an emergency, is my son had actually got upset enough to where when he hit his head. He busted it open. He required six stitches. And that's part of the reason it was so extremely urgent for me to just stop what I was doing. Nothing else went through my head. I just need to drop my trailer. I'll be faster. And I need to get back to my boy. And that's what I did. No company comes before my kids. At that point of doing that, when you was letting them know, because I, I'm assuming this is a time where, where you had to drop the trailer and hurry up and get to your boy. And and you telling the dispatcher that, what what is the pushback from the dispatcher like? They 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 giving you the I don't care speech or the 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 the, the freight is important speech. Like you have a family emergency. Like yo, I I need to get home. Their immediate response was that I was under a load and I need to get back there before I went home. Oh no no no. Which that that doesn't work for me. If I if I call you and I tell you, hey, my son busted his head open, he's got an emergency, going to take my son to the hospital and meet him at the hospital, that's not up for negotiation. That means I'm giving you a friendly little hello. I'm going to be out of service at the moment. 
this is what I'm doing. This is not me asking permission. Facts. That that's that's a negative for me. I if my moms and and my son, if anything happens to him, I I, I gotta go. I I gotta be there. Yeah. So if you want me to pick up a load along the way, let me know. But I am going home. So I understand. I I understand exactly what what you was going through and what you was what what your mindset was because your kid is hurt. You, you I'm I'm sorry. I I'm look. Let me drop this load. All you have to do is call, get somebody to repower it. Or call the 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 place, say, hey, one of my drivers has a family emergency. We'll, we'll work out a way into getting the load to you. So, but right now our our focus is on the driver. And it seems that not only controversial company Super Eagle, but it seems that a lot of companies don't seem to have that focus. They they say they they say that in their sales pitch. They treat you like family. They 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 know you by name. They care about the driver. But do you really if 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 something goes down like in my situation or your situation, do you guys really care about us that much so we can Go and see if our families is okay. This company, if you tell them you have to go home, they'll send you an opposite way or they'll tell you they can't find anything going home. We had 23 trucks stuck without heat anywhere between Pendleton, Oregon and Omaha, Nebraska that were stuck in ditches. And it took me turning my truck into a bus and trying to go around, pick up as many drivers as I can to take them to airports and take them to train stations and Greyhounds just to get them home because they had been stuck in their trucks. There's one driver who's a good friend of mine. He was stuck in his truck for over 24 hours. And I'm surprised that him nor his dog wasn't in worse shape than what they were, but it was enough to give him a wake-up call about who actually cared. I mean, I called the state police to go out and check on the state police to go out and you know, get him a rescue, get him a tow. And it wasn't until after everybody was out of the snow and finally just said, screw it, we're going home, that the company was like, oh, are you guys okay? Oh, I'm glad you guys are all right, but here's your next load. Here's your next assignment. No, we're not taking any more loads. We're going home. We're done. We're absolutely done. What we had on our trailers, we were going to deliver, and then we were going home, and we were done. And it's been nonstop. It's not just me receiving threats. There's a lot of drivers receiving threats right now. I can't speak for all companies, but I can tell you that there is a lot of companies similar to Super Ego that just does not care about us. Well, again, thank you very much for coming on. I I know you got your you got to take care of your family now, and it's getting a little bit late. But I would like to throw in this last question before we get on up out of here. Uh, one of the one of the criteria for you know drivers to come up in the controversial company Super Eagle is the fact that they're only looking for drivers that only has like three to four months of experience, and they bait and switch them from offering them a quote-unquote company position at 60 cent a mile to switching them into a lease purchase program of 88 percent a mile you being in the inner workings of all of that do you do you feel that three months is 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 really enough time for a driver to understand everything that he or she is going to go through with that company I don't believe so. I don't. That's in a general aspect. When you're going into the field of owner up, I've been doing this for over 10 years, and I can tell you that they hype people up on the idea of be your own boss and own your own truck, which is great. But the way Super Ego operates and a lot of the companies operate is you're an owner operator by title, but you're going to run as a company driver. We're going to have full access and full control to you 24-7. You are our property. But to have somebody with three months experience, I wouldn't recommend going into anything owner-operator until after a year of consistent background in the field of trucking. And that's if you have a mentor. I mentored over 200 drivers with this company. They were not ready. They did great, though. They learned very quickly, but it just was not enough time. Uh. 
in too deep like Omar. Make me wanna track you down and hit the track hawk with the crowbar. I knew we wouldn't go far, like we ran out of ethanol. Now your nosy ass mama wanna get involved. When I met you, you was on the couch with the plastic. She need an Emmy, bitch so dramatic. Now your baggage got me on edge like jagged. Fucking up my homes, look Patrick. You swift to jump shift like a chief. Been crying on my line like Therese. But it ain't all you, it's me. Blame it on the things I went through.